Lots of action to cover in the month of October. So let's get it started right away with a seven-way bomb pot with Pocket Jacks at Outlaws Casino. Already 140 in the middle, and we flop an over pair on a dry board and face a bet of 100 and a call as well. I raise to a modest 300. I like this play. Over pairs would be very disguised on this board. I don't want to tend to fold with too big of a raise, but I also don't want to let scare cards come on the turn and not get future value. The original better is the only caller, and we got a big pot brewing of 840, going to a nine of spades on the turn. We were 400 big blinds deep to start the hand, and now have about two times the pot left remaining. With just a call on the flop, the most likely hands are 6-7 for the main straight draw, and different tens. I bet 400 for half pot and get another call. Another 9 on the river, great card, making it even more unlikely we are beat because two pairs on the flop we are beating now. Weak tight play by me, I believe. Checking back though, have to admit I just kind of felt the pot was big and he wouldn't call three streets with the raise on the flop with just a 10, but I think that passive play is why I included this hand. Just got to learn from it. I'm ahead so often with 10s that is pretty much the majority of his range. I definitely should have put a value bet, even if it was small. Maybe he gets a fold more often than not, but a for sure lesson for the next bomb pot. I show it down and beat a 10. Next up at Central Coast Casino now, we make what I think is a pretty standard raise under the gun six-handed. After adding in two more cards for some Pot Limit Omaha, we get three bet from the big blind, which is not often the case in these types of passive games. This player loves to say pot, by far his most likely bet size. I make the call being double suited and in position. The shallower stacks do have a great spot if they were planning this, which I don't believe, to four bet given the three better would likely repot, Didn't happen. The ace that I have does block villain from having pocket aces, but in my short experience, like I said, with this great game, three bets are just so often aces. We're going to a pot of 320. Looking for black cards or a king? Thank you. I'm interested. The small blind checks and the three better pots it. Even more blocking pocket aces for me now, but still quite certain he has them. I call. The small blind goes over the top. Not the most difficult decision for the two of us, and we make the call, and are now building a dry side pot. Turn is the BEA Utiful 10 of clubs, giving us the Nutter Butters. So I can actually go back to just the King 3 of clubs, like in Hold'em ready to pot the turn myself to get value from pocket aces, but the villain decides to stick to his guns and pot it himself. Gotta love position. I make the easy shove over the top, and he makes the call. 1.4k in the main pot, 7.5 in the side. Biggest pot of my life at a total of 8.9k, and we are dodging a board pair. Safe. I color up, protecting Rapunzel behind my white castle of hundreds. Pretty soon afterwards, having the game break early in the morning. And now off to a different night, to my new second biggest pot ever, and biggest ever hold'em hand. My previous vlog is already completely out of date. At Central Coast Casino again, with a pretty mediocre hand in Ace-10 offsuit, but on the butt, 10. A crazy drunk player that has overbet the pot multiple times already. Min raises to 10, which could literally be any two cards. A caller behind him. I raise to 50. This hand plays much better with less players in the pot, so I can knock the blinds out. And I want to isolate the VIP if possible and build a pot in position. Both players that voluntarily put money into the pot call. And we go to a pretty mediocre flop of 10 7 6 with two diamonds with our pretty mediocre preflop hand. Crazy Donk shoves his entire stack. Yep, covering both players, 24x is effective to me. 
I got to think what this crazy man has. He would absolutely do this with worse, like King-10, Queen-10, Jack-10, really any 10. So I make the call and hope for the best. 7.6k in the middle, not knowing if we are nearly drawing dead, or if he is and we're dodging. Not the best turn in an offsuit 9, putting up a one-liner, but a blank river gives us some hope. Both of us are hesitating, which I like, almost as much as seeing him turn over king 6 of spades. Bottom pair, no flush draw, no straight draw. That would have been dirty, but we weren't dodging too much. I was actually down $300 before this hand for the session. Just was into the game for 4k because you can match the biggest stack. I was obviously incentivized to do so and was for sure worth it. I could have gotten it all if I was a pessimist and greedy matching his stack, but fear not. This next hand plays itself and did not require nearly as tough of a decision on my part to finish off this crazy villain. This is for sure cherry picking the dates, but starting from September 23rd and ending on October 13th, I won almost $32,000. Played the four biggest pots of my life, two in PLO, which I'm pretty new to, two in Hold'em, and won all four. Sadly though, all good things come to an end. Having the second half of October bring us back down to earth a little bit, one last hand to go over for the month of October with much more in-depth analysis with the help of a fellow Central Coast poker player. It took him a while, but he did finally recognize me from the vlog. He previously, a while ago, set up a forum where many of the poker vlogs are listed so people can find other ones. He's interested in teaming up and going over this one hand, so I think you'll greatly enjoy hearing from him during our big hand we played against each other. Roll it. This is uh, Ryan. We had an interesting hand a few weeks ago. Uh, Five-handed. I raised with ace-king uh, offsuit in the hijack, which is the first player. And I get three bet by Ryan in the small blind to about 100. And what do you have? Uh, pocket tens. Mm -hmm. Pocket tens. So three bet that hand pretty much always? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, in that spot, short-handed, I'm... Um... Three betting pretty wide, so yeah, that's like a fist pump. Three okay, bet. and we are but. playing. Uh, yeah, we are playing deep. So with Ace King, uh, I'm just trying to play my whole range, and I want to call a lot. So to me, if I four bet, it's essentially a bluff. So I would rather just call and play position. But I'd do that even with really strong hands. Would you? Is that your thought process, or do you four bet more if you're deep? Uh, with Ace King, I'm more inclined to four bet it out of position versus in position. Hey, yeah. I'm I'm happy to play a three bet pot in position with Ace King. Mm -hmm. So, um, like in your spot, yeah, I'm probably flatting uh, and playing post flop, especially given how deep we are. Mm -hmm. If stack sizes were different, then uh, I guess you could make an argument for four bet. But yeah, if the if the stacks were 100 big blinds or less, yeah, I'd yeah, pretty exactly. much always 4-bet. Yeah, yeah, then... But that's what's new and great about... Uh, we're at uh, Central Coast Casino. You could buy in super deep, so it makes spots way more interesting. Yeah, I mean, we were like... I don't know, at least 500 big blinds deep it was, for this hand, probably. I forget, but it was really deep. Yeah. Flop is uh, Ace-10-9. Uh, rainbow. Uh-huh. Uh, so we both like the flop. <laughs> Supposedly, I really don't, but uh, <laughs> Ryan bet small. It was actually a tiny bit less than his raise. The Ace Nine Ten Rainbow board. I mean, that's a uh, pretty standard like rate at range advantageous board texture for my hand or perceived range. Which is so, good for me because I have yeah, what you're representing. Yeah, you have the Ace, so I'm pretty much always third potting it there. So for my end, I think it's a pretty standard call. At that point, I know your three bet calling range, and you calling me on the flop. That you're much more likely to have an ace since I unblocked him. Turn gets even uh, worse. It's uh, another ace, and it's a second spade. 
and Ryan checks. So why was the check? Um, I checked because I know Noah's either going to have an ace here or not. The best way to build the pot is through a check raise and then barrel river um, versus bet bet. Analyzing the hand after the fact, I mean, there's a lot of bluffs I can have there, right? Like, um, I'm three betting seven eight suited and queen jack suited a lot too pre flop. Um, so I want to have when I split my ranges um, on the turn there uh, between bluffs and value. Um, I want to have I want to have a bucket of hands that are bluffs and seven eight suited and queen jack suited are two hands that I would check raise that turn. Mm -hmm. um, I would so think yeah, king, king jack and king queen too, right? Yeah, yeah. Like all, like all those hands, I would check raise turn. So, well, I guess you can say what you did when I checked. Yeah, I bet. Uh, I bet small again. I thought he was actually giving up and didn't have a hand. So I was not in the right uh, scenario at all. So I forgot what I bet, but it was pretty small. You bet like one twenty-five. It, it was, was like, like really small. It was like a quarter of the pot. Because I didn't think he had much, so I wanted him to try to bluff. So then he uh, went for his plan and check raised. So to me, it looks like either you have an ace and you're trying to induce and think I have something worse, um, or you have nothing and you're just trying to take the pot effectively. And um, so yeah, I kind of want to pull myself out with my race sizing, which I think I made at like 375. I thought about going even larger. So the river is an eight, offsuit eight. Mm -hmm. So queen jack specifically gets there and the pot's around 11 1200 so i'm basically in my mind calling any bet he makes because i just think this is pretty much the top of my range sometimes i'm gonna beat the hands he's betting that he thinks are good because he might have ace queen and think i have ace weaker kicker but he bets pot essentially feeling i could be beat but felt it was too good and then i made the call and what was your thought process what sizing I was gonna go with because obviously yeah, I want to get called I want to get value in that spot and like when you call turn I know you have a um, pretty strong ace um, so you thought I had ace jack ace queen ace king. yeah I mean I, I when you call a turn like you always have an ace there so it's like is he ever capable of folding um, trips five-handed on the river so I felt kind of stuck but Big hand goes to Ryan this time. I set over set it him one of the first games we played, so we're about even so far. Yeah, we're about break <laughs> even. There's plenty to go around in these games, so we don't really need to be. I kind of like a hidden gem here for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, the hand from your perspective was really interesting after the fact. I thought about it the next day or two after, and like, I think like. Like, if you have a queen or jack or king of spades in your hands, it makes it... Yeah, I even, had no spades. You had two red cards, but, like, that would make it a lot more interesting of a decision. Because it blocks opinion. way more of the bluffs. It blocks more of my bluffs, so effectively it makes a weaker hand than ace-king almost an easier call just because I have that much less nutted hands. It's it a, really, to me, relies on would, would you <laughs> Would you bet a weaker hand that you yeah. think's good? That's yeah, like it, a well, huge part. Like, would you I, do I would, that with like, ace-queen? I, I think I, I have to value bet ace-jack plus there, right? You know, I think you're a good enough player to fold a weaker ace, but there's a lot of players that I don't know well. if it's ex exploitative. If my kicker didn't play, so that's any ace that's lower than the mm -hmm. eight, I would, I'd probably fold the turn, to be honest, but definitely the river. I don't know if that's exploitative. Because in these games, I'm not really looking to go after Ryan and huge pods. Because a lot of the other players kind of, not really the regulars, but the once in a while players kind of give their chips away. So like, hopefully you've seen, I'm going to put the first hand I played. It was the ace-10 hand against Rocky. Oh, that you, yeah, you called him off. Yeah, he bet, Love Rocky. He bet like 30 times the pod with bottom pair. Yeah. So that's the spot that I'm looking sick, for. That was a sick call. On, uh, yeah, that, that's where we're trying to make our mo money in these games. <laughs> I've, I, no, I mean, that, that, that's a call versus Rocky. But. Top pair, top kicker that yeah, he bets huge with. But there's a lot of hand that can beat your hand. I know. And I mean, then, I called and then off. the pot was not even that big. No, no, he the pot. Like he did the similar he thing, thousand, he but he, he had king like, six of spades. I did it. like queen six of spades. Or... He did the similar play earlier, and I had top pair queen kicker, and I folded. So I'm like, 
This guy's just going crazy. If I had a draw, I would have lost. I mean, I'm impressed. <laughs> that's, 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 that's how I would, I play. Yeah. You know, it's like because Rocky do, you know, you know how he does. He does freaking. But it's like the opposite. When it's like a normal player, you rather have a draw to the nuts because you know you're live. Yeah. yeah. I mean, against Rocky, you just want to pair. So hopefully we get some uh, interesting hands later, but you'll see more Ryan for sure. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about the hand, but. Sorry, sure, you'll get me next time. Yes, yeah, set over set, it evens yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll pass chips back and forth. For top, a while. we got trips top kicker versus full house, and Stop we have set sorry over set. Sorry about the hand, man. Father. That's that's the floor, man. See ya. That's not poker. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, reliving these absurd hands where I still needed to run pure to win. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and see you all in December.